for me, the whole thing started really when I was young, like I said, and I was in elementary school. We were living in Florida, and uh, I had a teacher, I believe it was the fifth grade, um, and the teacher would uh, make us every day before we left school sing uh, Jingle Bells in Spanish. I remember that, and his name was Mr. Freeman. And the one thing that he always wanted us to do is to learn that song and learn about history because he was a history teacher. And I remember whenever I left the fourth grade to go into the fifth grade, yeah, it was the fifth grade, everybody used to have these horrible stories because he was this, you know, big black guy and he was mean and everything. And if you got out of line with him, he would just he would be so awful to you and stuff like that and whenever I finally got into his class I mean it was just like completely amazing he was completely the opposite of what people had told me about him um, and he, he I think that's probably one of the first times where I've actually gotten inspired I might have gotten in, uh, a little bit inspired before that in fourth grade you know um, but in the fifth grade you know that's where I had to do my book reports where I just mentioned it about I did Ponce de Leon and how uh, he discovered Florida and then George Washington and I was living in Florida too by the way when that was going on so that's one of the reasons why my book report was on Ponce de Leon and uh, the fountain of youth and stuff like that um and and mind you too you know i i was interested in all that stuff and i i didn't watch indiana jones until i was in my teens you know what i mean and this was back whenever i was uh in the fifth grade so and you know and i'll say it again too you know I mean I, I wasn't a good student at all I didn't make A's I didn't make B's I was a failing student to be honest with you um, I, I'd make A's maybe in uh, PE you know something that was easy because I was a skinny little guy who uh, was very active had no problems with doing exercises and stuff but I wasn't very good at uh, exercise or at a uh, school work whatsoever I was actually a bad student more than like a bad bad student I wasn't really I was like cause I like to cause trouble more than I did anything else but you know the one thing that I can say though is I loved history um, I might have played it off in school like I didn't but when it came down to it I mean I would I would go home and I'd read the textbooks and stuff because I wanted to uh, learn about history and you know the stories that were inside of it um, and that just continued all through my life even during the times after I dropped out of school and because I did I dropped out of school actually at a very early age I made it to the eighth grade and dropped out in eighth grade I never even made it to high school so when I uh, even after that though I was always you know reading about history getting information about history and stuff like that so it, it's uh, been something that's been there all my life um, I didn't start really getting into the full-blown aspect of educating myself until later in my life don't get me wrong you know it's not like I was always doing that because there was a time of a huge time gap in my life where I didn't you know try to educate myself and it took me until I was in my late 30s or just going into my 40s before I finally figured out that you know um I'm only hurting myself. It doesn't matter if I'm in school or if I'm not in school. If I'm not learning something, then there's something wrong. 
and I, if I want to have a better life then I need to constantly be putting myself in check so that I uh, I, I was learning something and uh, you know the thing about even those times I mean I was one of those uh, kids and young adults above eight, 18 and 20 and all that who got hooked into the wrong crowds did the drugs the alcohol stuff like that I'm 50 years old now and uh, you know I I can safely say you know that I uh, was a was, was on a downhill you know what I mean and uh, but while I was doing that I was always doing the history thing and it it would come up in conversations and people would say how is it that you know that stuff and I was like I don't know I just read <laughs> you know that was always my big uh, explanation for it so uh, I, uh, I I got into history don't get me wrong I, I didn't get into like ancient history until these years in my 30s and 40s up into my 50 being 50 years old um, th until this time period but I was always interested in American history I was interested in European history you know things of that nature everything going back to Rome I uh, I like the Byzantine Empire but I wasn't aware of the Persians or the Assyrians or the Sumerians um, those were alien to me for the longest time I've I've heard of them you know what I mean but I didn't really know about them um, I dabbled a little bit with the Egyptians but not very much every time I uh, got into the Egyptians it was usually had something to do with Aliester Crowley or some kind of witchcraft stuff you know like I was one of those 17 year olds who believed in uh, um, the Necronomicon you know what I mean and I, I didn't realize until I was about 23 that that was just a, f a fake book and there was nothing real about it but I I was one of those kids um, but anyhow uh, getting into that area too you know I, I don't want people to misunderstand it at all either like when it comes to like uh, ancient astronauts yeah I I, I got into that I, I did a full blown I started uh, <coughs> I started getting curious in a lot of the ancient history because of stuff like ancient astronauts and uh, going in and researching uh, Zachariah Sitchin you know and finding out if what he was saying was actually true or not and in the end it didn't really matter to me because of the information that I'd learned from starting out with him you know what I mean because I went from looking for lost civilizations or proof of lost civilizations to um, and uh, aliens the Anunnaki and all that stuff to I went from there to learning about these cultures who sprung up out of nowhere basically in the middle of a desert created houses out of mud learned how to uh, create uh, crops and stuff and then how they ended up migrating I started learning about the Sumerians and their gods and their uh, their lore you know and it went from there into the Egyptians I started getting back into the Egyptians and taking it serious and learning about the Amtua which I've made posts about on uh, my videos but I do want to go further in the Egyptians too because I know there's a lot more that I need to check out on there um, but the Sumerians are the ones that I first caught on to and got interested in um, I turned around and I 
uh, went from the Sumerians into the Urartu and then the Turkish, uh, which it's back then it wasn't Turkey, it was just uh, um, the Urartu, which is up around uh, Armenia, I believe it is. Yeah, Armenia. And uh, then there was the Hittites, you know what I mean? And uh, that was something that really just uh, amazed me because then I started learning about um, what well, like a lot of people was Zacharias Hitch and they don't understand his writing and they 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 say that all of the stuff that he wrote about the Sumerians were false and uh, I found out later on that the reason why they felt that way was because they were reading the wrong text. Uh, Zachariah Sitchin was taking a lot of the information that he got from the Phoenicians and during his time he had mixed the Phoenicians up with the Hittites so he believed that he was reading stuff from the Hittites which weren't the Hittites it was actually old Phoenician writings and I learned all that because of you know research and finding out for myself and listening to old interviews and stuff and uh, even through that whole process none of the stuff was you know all aliens from outer space and stuff but it was amazing because they did believe in giants you know what I mean the Hittites the Arartu um, the um, Phoenicians all of them believed in it um, and I I ended up uh, having issues with the Greeks because I started uh, finding out that with history you know most of my life and most of everybody's lifetime you know we've uh, been brought up on this Western philosophy that rotates around the Greek and Greek history everything seems to stem from them you know and in our educational system we, we aren't introduced to the Persians you know what I mean and their culture and then what they believed in you know it took me until in, I got into my 30s to finally realize that the Persians were the first empire to actually believe in freedom they they abolished slavery you know they, they just didn't believe in it I hear some scholars try to beat around the bush and say oh but some of them had slaves and I was like I've never I've, I've been reading the the papers okay and th there's never a place in there that mentions that the Persians ever owned any kind of slaves and then uh, I started learning about the Zoroastrian and Zoroastrians and uh, then about uh, uh, oh gosh I forgot the name of the religion they had above them it was uh, up around uh, it, it was the uh, Indo-Europeans or the uh, yeah they're the ones that had it it was like Mitz Mit Mitzla or something like that I don't want to get into a history lesson but Later on, I'll pull it up and make a thing about it. But uh, it uh, all that stuff started uh, coming to to, or I started learning about it, you know, and I really liked it. And um, I started learning about you know these cultures that formed uh, metals and like iron working and stuff like that. I learned more about the pyramids and uh, about uh, countries outside of Egypt that was actually, you know, doing the same thing. They were building pyramids all over the place, but at a smaller scale, you know, the smaller pyramids. And it just amazed me that a lot of the history that I thought I knew, I didn't know and the only reason why I did it was because I got caught up with these crazy pseudo historical figures I guess you could call them <laughs> but they inspired me to do what I'm doing now and uh, I, I, I 
say it 100 percent you know i would have never done this stuff if it wasn't for being inspired by those those people in my life and uh i i really like it you know i mean a lot of the stuff that i learn now is probably boring compared to a lot of that stuff but i'm learning a lot i'm learning you know about how the assyrians stored their grain and how it was managed and distributed and uh about food supplies coming to the to the uh emperor's uh, palace you know what i mean and the the sacrifice the sacrifice or the sacrifices that the temples had to make and when they had leftover grains they would send it to the emperor and then so forth you know there was an actual system where they were working together um and i've learned you know that uh uh these historians are actually using uh, textiles you know to uh indicate what culture did what and where they came from and stuff they can tell by textiles and fabrics and stuff like that which uh, which uh regions these peoples came from and it just amazed me you know <coughs> and then i started learning about linguistics and uh the brothers Grimm. a lot of people don't understand that you know the brothers Grimm actually were the ones who uh really got the whole ling linguistics thing going and uh i didn't learn a lot from them until i learned about um uh uh, romanticism in writing which that was recently too that was within the last 10 years that I learned about the romantic romantic movement and uh, the Brothers Graham you know Sleepy Hollow and uh, I learned about them and then I started learning through history about uh, about uh, linguistics and uh, how it originated and how um, they use language separate from the written word you know what I mean like they can track words that come out of your mouth and the way you say it without writing it down to a history that can go thousands of years back you know like the word water in the United States or in England England or English period is the same as the word water in turkey you know what i mean and there's a connection there which goes back so i thought that was always pretty cool and i always enjoyed learning about stuff like that you know what i mean but uh those are the kind of things that i uh am into now you know what i mean and i wanted to talk more about the stuff that I started me out on everything but as I kept talking things kind of you know went further and I'm glad it did because I was able to talk more about this subject this is something that I have always been interested in and I really do enjoy it um, I don't think anybody could have uh, discouraged me from learning about history not even today so I just uh, I I wanted to you know make my first video a little bit about that you know what I mean going over you know what I'm about when it comes to history and stuff and I'm always open-minded to people whenever they want to talk about it um, but I'm always the type of person who will say, look, you know, this is what I learned. Uh, you know, this is what I learned. And if you don't agree with me, I'm going to try to show you some evidence of it, you know. So, and then maybe, you know, figure something out why your opinion is different than mine. I just 
recently did that in chat with Robot, this guy that everybody calls Robot. We both did the Om Tawa, and uh, there was a term that I uh, learned in one of the texts for the Om Tawa, which, call, which is called Petra. And he said that there was no word Petra that was written in it. But later on, after I found the text that I was looking for, which took me about two, three days, um, I was able to show them that this was the original text that was written in uh, 1905. And <coughs> the word Petra was in the original text, but the man who discovered um, I think it was Tuts, no, it was, I forget which uh, tomb it was, and uh, was supposed to have been uh, the guy who deciphered the Am Tuat was, uh, was wrong. And he, he did that in a lot of the things that he did done, and uh, it was known because I've, I've learned about it and I've read about it, but it was known that he was often wrong. He was a great archeologist for his time period, but he always misinterpreted the, the, the words and stuff. And uh, that was on me because I was reading the original text and then I went through and I read his text and I noticed that it was two different names. And I was like, that's actually what we're witnessing there is a rewrite. It was where later on somebody interpreted it and came out with the right name instead of uh, Petra. So that is one example of you know the kind of person I am when it comes to history. Now I know that I caught it and I found it. Those are the kind of gold nuggets that I look for in history. I want to find those little those little stories within a story you know what I mean and uh that's what I'm about when it comes to all that because um that's that's what it's all about period you know I mean you've you've got to enjoy your what you do you know what I mean if if I didn't enjoy um finding these things and learning about them then I wouldn't be able to actually I wouldn't be able to do it I mean I've gotten to the point where I've had issues with a lot of things in uh, in my life and it's just something that really really I do enjoy so um, Mr. Robot, or, re yeah, Robot, he's on the chat right now. He's wondering when we're having this Jetsy conference. Um, I will uh, see if he, or I, I'll tell him that I'm on, or I'm on live stream if he wants to get on, but it's up to him. Oh, he's talking about um, we're, we're, we're going to have this Minds uh, Roundtable, which uh, we're going to do for, um, I believe it's on Saturday, it's on every, or Friday, Friday or Saturday, and it's going to be, you know, everybody in chat gets together, and we are going to do uh, a roundtable event for, for the w once a week. And everybody can get on there and talk about topics and stuff and what's going on in the chat and things like that which is going to be pretty good so um, that's something that I do look forward to so I am uh, going to go ahead and end this right now and after this I will come back out with um, something else for tomorrow. I believe it's current events. I'm not po I'm not 100% for sure. Um, yeah, history. Now, tomorrow I'm going to talk about gaming. 
so I'll be on here to talk about gaming and then current events is on Thursday so I will be doing the gaming uh, tomorrow and uh, there are some pretty good topics that I can come up with on there I've uh, got some stuff with emulators that I've been working with and then there is the thing that happened with Xbox and uh, Xbox and PlayStation over Activision which I do want to actually get into that and have a conversation I uh, am recording this video so whenever I am done with this I am going to publish it on YouTube and then I'm also going to uh, put it on my chat so you guys can uh, watch that if you want to you know the whole thing about what I'm saying here though you know is <coughs> that uh, when it comes to history I do enjoy history so I uh, I'm wanting to create kind of a, a show where I can have people come on and they can discuss history openly with me their thoughts and their views about what took place in the past and I don't want to cause any kind of disruption I just want to uh, have a conversation about it and get your views on it and if I'm wrong about something then you can pull up some evidence to correct me if I'm wrong about it then or you're wrong about it then I can pull up some too you know and actually get down to the nitty-gritty about history and find out what really took place I mean that's what I'm really into and what I'm looking forward to doing forward to doing um, I enjoy a lot of people's take on history because a lot of people actually have different viewpoints and uh, I just I just think that that's pretty cool you know what I mean um, let me see uh, yeah the uh, roundtable conference or the, the Minds roundtable event will be uh, uh, be um, uh, uh, let me see here uh, Friday I'm guessing yeah Friday and that will be at um, six o'clock yeah yeah six o'clock and we set that up yeah because there's uh, mark who is in the chat group that's uh, that's uh, going to be uh, I'm going to let him know I'm going to say it's on Friday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time and let him know that that's when the Minds Roundtable uh, weekend okay it's the Minds Weekend Roundup event that's what we're calling it <laughs> so it, and that's going to be on Friday at 6 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time that'll be uh, 7 p.m. I believe or no yeah 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific time and uh, 10 o'clock British time so because Mark's British so we have to keep track of all that stuff and um, that's 
one of the people right there I was telling you about, uh, he's uh, interested in history and stuff like that. So I think that's pretty cool. That's something that I, th this is something that I did want to add into my weekly uh, conversation and topics. Uh, it could be at 5 p.m. But I believe it's actually a, a five, six. Yeah, because I got everything else. Like I've got strangeness at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. So, and I told him it would be right after I do my strangeness video, even though I don't put an entire hour, or I don't put an entire hour into a live stream that doesn't mean I'm not going to give it a one hour time slot you know what I mean so it's still going to be one hour in the time slot no matter what um, because I really I think it's safer that way just in case if I do get a bit of inspiration and I'm able to talk on farther with the topics that I'm wanting to do, then I can do it. But uh, um, just so you know, too, these, uh, they're not the best in the world, but these uh, photos that I'm putting on my slideshow there, those are what I created. I, uh, I'm not that big of an artist, but at least it's mine, you know what I mean? And I've also got my own music that I'm putting on there. Um, these are Phoenician uh, boats before they had weapons that they put out the sides they had the rowers down on the bottom and uh, on the top is usually where people who had weapons I guess you'd say spears and stuff like that or the captain and whatever they were on top and I'm sure they looked a lot better than that but I just wanted to give a rough draft of what they look like and the designs that the ships had so um, that's all mine and I want to make more stuff kind of like that too but to be honest with you I've been doing so much on streams and stuff like that that I have barely had any time to do any CGI or graphics and I really want to get back to it I even put the stars in the back right there and like I said, don't make fun of me. That's because I'm not an artist. This is something that I do to try to get better at it. You know, it's part of that learning thing I was telling you about. You know, um, but anyhow, I wanted to uh, at least do a short stream and let everybody get to know me a little bit better and if you guys want to make comments make comments in the comment section I've got a chat it's named 24 7 live stream TV right now because eventually that's what I want to do I started out trying to do the whole 24 7 it's 24 7 live stream TV is what it's called no, sorry about that but I tried to do it and uh, it just really caused a lot of issues with other things that I have to do right now and uh, I uh, finally had to regroup I'm gonna try to get this stuff organized a lot better maybe get a better following and stuff like that but I got I have the chat set up in the chats if you guys want to go in there and check it out you can um, I'm always in the general chat so if you want to talk to me there you're you can come in there and find me just uh, use the at and then Roger underscore Hanson and you'll have no problem finding me um, everybody's more than welcome if you want to get on Jitsi and actually have a conversation with me while I'm doing this man you, you're more than welcome to do that too I've said it in every stream that I've made so far and I mean it too you guys are all more than welcome to show up and eventually <coughs> I'd like to get you know people who would be willing to sit down and have an interview with me you know or maybe give a lead in of you know what they know about certain topics and stuff so that's another 
aspect of what I'm trying to do here, you know. So with that, I am going to end this. I hope you guys enjoyed what you've heard. If you want to hear more, or if you have certain things you want to hear, let me know in the comments. Thanks for listening.